Today I will show you how you can make your photos even more interesting just by playing with few settings in Photoshop and adding some glow. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. You already saw what we will do today in the intro, so let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Alright guys, today we'll work with this RAW file from Sony Camera and you have the link down there in the description in case you want to download the same file and work along with me to practice with this tutorial. So I will just go drag and drop it into Photoshop and Photoshop will automatically open Camera RAW to develop that RAW file. So here I will not do much for a start, I will just change the color temp temperature with the uh, eyedropper tool. So I will press here on newspaper and everything will be a bit more bluish and that's it. Now I will open this back into Photoshop but as a smart object because I want to have opportunity to go, to go back and forth and change some settings. So to open it as a smart object I just need to press and hold shift and it says open object, click on that and that's it, Photoshop will open it as a smart object. Okay now the procedure is like this. I will go and make the face brighter, more yellowish, add some glow around the newspaper, around the face, eyes and we are done. So that's it. But how to do it? There are several ways in Photoshop how you can do it. You can use curves, you can use a curves adjustment layer, make everything brighter and then invert everything and just play with the face and you can do like that. You can maybe use instead of curves exposure adjustment layer and do exactly the same things. But I don't want to do that. I want to play with this smart object with the actual RAW file. So. I want to make a copy of this layer, but with the smart objects you cannot just make a copy with Ctrl or Command J like this, because what happens? If you double click on a copy and maybe brighten it a bit, press OK, you will not just only affect that copy, you will affect both original and the copy as you can see. So with the smart object, let's undo a few times, you need to go right click on layer and then go to new smart object via copy, so that's a trick. And now if you double click on a copy part, you can play with this without messing the original. So now what I want to do, I want to open the file a bit because this is a raw file, we uh, preserved a ton of inf information here so we can really play with this without, without uh, breaking the file, so that's cool. So I will open the file a bit, open the shadows because I want to make those eyes brighter, so as you can see before and after really big difference so this is what I like to do okay and let me see let's unzoom this the face is okay maybe it's a bit brighter than I need something like that and that's it for now I will press OK and now I will have two smart objects files I will go press and hold alt or option key click on a layer mask to load a black layer mask and now I will go with a white soft brush and maybe 10% opacity or so, I will just play with the brightness and I will make the face brighter because from this fire, fire will illuminate the face and face will be really bright, not too bright, but brighter than it's right now, okay? We want to leave that impression that the fire is a bit brighter than it was in the photo, so this is cool. And also I will go with the 5% opacity, as you can see, really slow and brighten up the face. And also I want to brighten the eyes a lot, because I, I love that effect. Maybe just some highlights here on the cheek, because this part and uh, the cheek and the left part will be bright from this side of the fire and maybe the chin and the uh, part of the neck here will be illuminated from this part of the fire so we can play with that. Okay so for now this is cool and as you can see this is already better so before and after really cool. I can go and double tap on this again and let me show you another cool trick in case you want to go like that because there is no wrong way to go with uh, something like this. There are just a lot of different ways how you can do the same thing. So you can go here with a radial filter and you can affect only the face and maybe a little bit of the neck etc. So now you can go with the color temperature and make everything more yellowish because from the fire face will be a bit more yellow than it's right now. So 
I will just reset everything else like that and just make it a bit more yellowish and press OK and you will see now now it's more yellowish so before and after that's one way how you can do it and that's pretty cool okay another way how you can do it is just by painting with some layers here so I'll just undo this okay and go with a new layer and add color color to the face I will go with the color dodge blending mode choose some kind of this kind of color but a darker version like this and now I can again paint on the face and on the neck again I'm painting with only 5% opacity I'm really slowly building the effect guys I don't want to go with 50% or 20% and just paint a lot of color with one stroke so this is before this is after again really nice warmer tone then what I like to do now I like to add some glow to the face to the eyes some uh, highlights to the eyes and uh, some highlights uh, to uh, the chin maybe the cheek uh, nose etc and add overall glow and that's basically it so how to do it I will go with building one layer at a time so this is glow number one and I will put it in the linear dodge blending mode that's the blending mode that works really good for a glow effect so again I will choose a color maybe more reddish but darker reddish color okay and now let's just go with 10% opacity as you can see I'm adding some glow here and there that's cool also I want to add some glow on the newspapers here from the fire like this maybe this is too much maybe 5% opacity and just one bigger stroke that's cool okay so don't go too much with this you can really easily go too much if you're not careful so let me show you really quickly before and after really nice glow effect from the fire I really love it so I'm small maybe here on the hair and now let's go and add something on the cheek right here a bit on the nose forehead neck just a bit we will build this effect with more layers so maybe something like that maybe some kind of highlights here nice okay now let's go to the eyes with the same color and everything actually I will go with a bit brighter color right a bit brighter and a bit more yellowish and I just want to emphasize these highlights okay and paint a new one so I try to imagine new highlights maybe a bit brighter too imagine new highlights from the fire on the both sides of newspapers so something like this and here too and this is like the fire from newspaper this is cool I really love it and maybe even with the brighter color a little bit more desaturated I will just paint here like this okay that's cool okay I really love the eyes right now so before and after yes that's cool before and after we'll play a bit more with that but for now this is cool so now everything is exactly the same I will just go with the new glow uh, layer and uh, paint a bit of more glow to the part of the images and then another glow layer etc until I'm satisfied with the resu result and also guys uh, have in mind that it's always better to build layer uh, by layer to stack several glow la layers together it will have a better effect than just to use one glow layer and paint everything on that so experiment and you will see what is the difference but it's much better to do in a stack mode so I will stack another layer glow number two and I will show another cool trick so now let's go and use a bit more reddish color 
saturated red color, not too dark, but something like this because I want a bit brighter glow. Okay. And paint here. Okay, that's cool. Maybe a bit on the here, right there. Somewhere here, somewhere here. Okay, and like this. Okay, and uh, another glow layer, but I forgot to put this into yeah that's cool another glow layer and let me show you now a really cool trick so glow number three i will add some highlights so even brighter color a bit more towards the orange and like this like this maybe a bit here and maybe a bit here okay Here some highlights. See, I will add here just to show you that we will get rid of that pretty soon with one cool trick on the nose. And maybe a bit darker and a bit reddish now. Here. Okay, now if I'll double click on layer and go on play with the blend if settings, just a second, like this. If I go and play with the blend if settings, I will go and uh, remove this glowing effect from the shadows on the face. If you don't know how to use blend if and what a blend if is, you can watch my tutorial about that on the link right here. It's really powerful tool to know, so check it out if you're not familiar with that. Okay, so I will just press and hold Alt or Option key and just remove this glow effect from the darker parts of the image. So like this. So before and after you can see really nice effect. Maybe to bring it a bit more down before and after. Yeah, this is cool. So this is really interesting, guys. And we can play even more with this. So maybe to lower the opacity a bit. Maybe it's too strong. I really like it. OK, now what we can do we can go and add another glow number four. Okay, I'm stacking the effects. I want now a bit more darker reddish color and just play around the shadows. So I want to add this only to the shadows, this darker parts, and I will do similar thing that I did with the highlights, but this time I will just the opposite. So double click and I want to remove everything from the highlights. So I want only to have in the shadows. So like that before and after before and after that's cool. So something like this. Let me see before after. Yeah, only in shadows. I really like it. So this is it guys. This is almost it. What we can do now we can go and uh, add maybe overlay empty layer. And this is like maybe dodging. Okay, and I will use white color and with again 5% opacity, I just want to add some highlights here and there. Just some highlights. And also I want to go to the eyes and play a bit more with these highlights. See? It's really cool. Also, maybe here. Just like this. Okay. This is really nice. Maybe a bit brighter here because from this side. Yeah, I will do that, but with some color. From this side, it will be again some reddish from from the fire maybe this one yeah that's cool and this is too much here so i will just go with layer mask black color and just with maybe 20 percent opacity and just want to erase some parts that i think i overdone it so this is cool 
before and after, before and after. I will now press Shift Control Alt or Shift Command Option E on a Mac to merge everything together into one new layer and again go to filter camera roll and just do some overall corrections. So I want to add the contrast. You can see this is cool. I want to add a little bit of the blacks and I want to lower the uh, clarity to have like a dreamy look, but I want to lower it a bit and then to add back some textures. So let me zoom it to see. So I'm doing this lowering the clarity, more dreamy soft look and adding back some textures. So I have a mix of both worlds and I love it. Also, let's let's go to the vignetting. So I want to add vignetting here, feather it a bit, and then I want to go to calibration. Here we can play with some colors. So I can boost the reds a bit and I can move them towards the yellows or towards the reds. But this time I will move it toward the yellows because I want to play. This is like uh, almost like orange and teal look, but we can do something opposite. We can boost the blues towards the right, towards the magenta and reds towards the left a bit. Let me see. Yeah, this is cool. Maybe greens a bit, just the touch like that. So before and after, before and after, really nice. We can go and even add some reddish colors to the highlights if we want just to see. That's a cool. That's cool, maybe not too much. Just like that, before and after. And also I want to sharpen it a bit. So something like that, press and hold Alt Option key to see what exactly I want to sharpen. So everything that is white will be sharpened. Radius about one pixel. And what I can do, I can go with a bit of contrast and I can make washout look. Let me show like this if I want or not. But for this image, I will not do that. I'll just play with this and also now I can open some shadows and lower the black. So this is cool. Before and after, I really love this. So I press OK and we're basically done. I will just show one cool trick that you can add to your images. I will create a new layer and I will create some triangles. So I, will, I can use the lasso tool and just, just draw a triangle. So something like this, one triangle. OK, then press and hold Shift to do to add another one or any shape that, that you want. It doesn't matter. Maybe the third one somewhere here smaller. OK, and I will fill it with a white color. So in case the white is background color, press control or command key and backspace. And that's it. And now what I like to do is just to put this into overlay blending mode and blur this. So I will go to filter blur and box blur. This is cool. Oh, let's see, I want to blur it so I will not recognize the shapes like that. I can rotate now, make it smaller, maybe like this, put it somewhere here, just like some kind of light leaks. Okay, and maybe to blur it with a Gaussian blur a bit like that and to lower the opacity a lot. So just a bit of light leaks. This is cool. So before and after, maybe it's too much before and after. I really love it. Also, you can do another empty layer into overlay blending mode and use white color and just just add more highlights. If you if you think you need more highlights somewhere or even like more yellowish highlights like like this, maybe if you want it, why not? So this is it. Maybe it's too much, but before and after that's an option. All right, guys, and that's basically it. Now what we can do, we can just crop this file to make it more suitable for Instagram in case you want to put it there. So let's do it. Let's go to a crop tool and uh, I need to choose four by five the Instagram format and I just want to make it a bit smaller like this. And this is the composition that I like. All right, just wait for a few seconds for Photoshop to crop it. And this is it. So let me show you before and after we went from this file, a little bit more ordinary photo to this more interesting, glowy 
file that you can put it anywhere that you like. Of course, this is maybe too much. Maybe you want to change the colors a little bit differently. You can do whatever you want, but this is how you can do it. One of the ways how you can make your photo even more interesting. Right, guys, so that's it for today. I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn some new interesting and fun tips, tricks and techniques that you can benefit from. Also, guys, if you appreciate this content, if you like this episode, press the like button down below, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already, and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. If you want to leave some comments to ask me something, you can do that by visiting the comment section down below, I will be glad to answer your questions. Also, guys, if you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page, the link is down there in the description, and you will get some things in return, like these PSD files, etc. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye bye.